Brutus. If I were Brutus now and he were Cassius, he should not humor me. I will this night, in several hands, and in his windows throw as if from several citizens, writings all tending to the great opinion that Rome holds his name, wherein obscurely Caesar's ambition shall be glanced at. And after this, let Caesar see to him sure, for we will shake him, or worse case endure.
comes the disjoint greatness from remorse. Then speak the truth, Caesar. I have not known this affection is such way more than this reason. But it is common proof that pettiness is young ambition's ladder. <laughs> Brutus, thou sleepest. Awake and see thyself. Shall roam, etc. Speak, strike, redress. <laughs> Brutus, thou sleepest. Awake. <laughs> Often have such instigations been dropped by the pick them up. Shall Rome stand under one man's awe? What Rome? Speak, strike, rigorous. Am I entreated to speak and strike? O oh, Rome, I make thee promise. If the redress will follow, thou will receive thy full petition at the hand of Brutus. Since Cassius first did wet me against Caesar, I have not slept. Between the acting of a dreadful thing, the first emotions and interim is like a phantasma, a hideous dream. Oh, conspiracy. Shameless thou, show thy face by night when evil are most free. And by day, where will thou find a cavern dark enough to mask thy monstrous visage? Seek not in conspiracy. Good morrow, Brutus. Do we trouble you? I have been up this hour awake all night. Know why these men that come along with you? Aye. Every man of them, and no man here but honors you, and wish to have that noble opinion which every noble Roman bears with you. This is the bonus. He is welcome to This is Jesus Brutus. He is welcome to This Casta, Cinna, and Metellus Cinna. They're all welcome. What watchful cares can expose themselves betwixt your eyes tonight? Keep your hands, all over, one by one. And let us swear our resolution. No! Not enough. Not the sufferance of our souls, the times of abuse. If these be motives weak, break off the times, and each one hence to his idle bed. So let high standing tyranny reign dawn, till each one drop by water. But if these, as I'm sure they do, Bear enough fire to kindle cowards and steal the vow of knowing spirits of women and countrymen. What need we, any spur but our own cause, to produce to redress? What other bond than secret Romans that have spoken the word and will not palter? And what other oath than honesty to honesty engage? Swear priests and cowards. Men coddless, old people carrying, such men that welcome wrongs, unto bad causes, swear such creatures as men doubt. But do not stain the even virtue of our enterprise, nor the impressive metal of our spirits to think that, for our cause, for our performance, it is its own. In every drop of blood that every Roman bears, and every noble bears, is guilty of a several bastardy if he do break even the smallest particle of any oath that has passed from him. Oh, uh, shall no man else be touched but only Caesar? Decius, well urged. I think it is not me, Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. Our push will seem too bloody to cut off the head and half the limbs, like a wrath in death and envy afterwards. For Cat Antony is but a limb. Of Caesar. <laughs> Must be sacrificers, but not butchers. Cats. Oh, that we could come by Caesar's spirit and not dismember Caesar. But alas, Caesar was bleed for it. And gentlemen, let's kill him boldly, but not rapidly. Let's carve him as a dish fit for the gods and for our hands. Think not of it. They can do no more than Caesar's arm and Caesar's head is off. <clears throat> but I fear him. There is no fear in him. Let him not die, for he will live and laugh at this hereafter. 